So you're this guy and you're working with a toolbox, which is everything you need. Till this fucker comes around and decides to kick your toolbox, you're mad at first, but he's offering you something more. A workshop, which has everything you had, and more. Next 3 can be summed up exactly like that. It feels like an overall upgrade to the view coding experience. In this video, I will imbue you with my brief yet hysterical explanations to make you understand what Next is all about. So up until now, you have been programming thinking that your user will run your code inside their browser. This is how most websites work, in fact. This is you, this is your application, and this is the browser. Whenever you request an application, a server responds you with a set of instructions about how to make it. But look at you. You clearly have no idea how to use them. But lucky for you, this guy does. So don't worry, he will use the instructions to paint the application you requested. This is a rendering mode known as CSR, which basically involves downloading the assets from the website and mounting them in your browser. What frameworks like Nux do is providing a different option called SSR. When you connect to a website, the server will give your browser a pre-rendered version of the page you requested. As you stand in awe before the partially made page, your browser adds its final touches to it, which is mainly the rest of the JavaScript logic. The cool thing about Nuxt is that you get to choose which rendering mode to use. By default, SSR will be activated, which is what we will try to focus on in this video. Another big feature that comes with Nuxt is Nitro. Nitro is a server engine which will allow us, among other things, to write our front-end code in the same code space as our back-end, and will give us a lot of quality-of-life updates. Now that you know some of the Nuxt main features, get back to your developer overalls, and let's see what you need to know about developing with Nuxt. By looking at the general, front-end and back-end features. After using this command, your Nuxt project is going to be initiated like this. A big thing about the Nuxt front-end experience is its folder structure. For example, creating a page is as simple as creating any view file in the pages folder and using this Nuxt page tag inside app.view. To view your page, you will simply have to navigate to its URL from your browser without any routing involved. Now, suppose you have two pages. You can let the user navigate between them using this Nuxt link tag, which is one of the many useful components provided by Nuxt. What's more, there are some neat functionalities to this, like dynamic routes. Basically, you can create a page whose name is enclosed in square brackets, like this, and it will match anything that falls under that route. This means that by connecting to posts slash anything, this page will be rendered. The text between the square brackets in your file name will be the parents variable you can use to access the value of that anything. Super useful when integrating with the backend. To give your app some consistent UI, such as header, footer, and so on, so that your page structure will look like this, you can use layouts. Every file inside this folder is going to be an available wrapper for your page. We are going to use this file to add styles and common components to our app. We will be using only this default layout, which simply requires you to wrap your app.view with this tag. Any components you want to add, you'll have to go through this folder. Nothing too fancy here, we're just going to define a header and a footer for our pages, just like we saw in the layouts. Now get back there and see that? Adding a component requires no import whatsoever. This will make our code much cleaner later on. Now, the server folder is pretty cool, because Nuxt will scan for all the files within the slash API and slash route subfolders and translate them into callable routes, available for your client, your server, depending on where your code is running. When you want to create an endpoint for your API, you can simply create a file within the slash API folder and specify its method before its TS extension. Inside this file, you're dealing with a client fetch call, export define event handler, which allows you to return a response to the client. In our case, we will simply return a list of fake posts. We can take advantage of the shared code space to refer to the same interfaces. In this case, I'm going to define a quick types folder with a type for our post response, which we will be using from the front end as well. Finally, head back to the post list view and use the composable use fetch to call our newly created endpoint. By doing this, we have completed a basic integration between the Nuxt frontend and backend. You may have noticed up until now two functions, use parents and use fetch. These are functions called composables. They are made available by Nuxt. We can define our own and they mainly allow us to get around that browser server thing. Wait, have you forgot? That crazy explanation about SSR? Okay, allow me to explain. When the page will get generated from the server, you will not have access to objects such as window, local storage, document, and so on. But when your code will be run inside the browser, it will. 
Your code should be able to work both when executed by the Node.js runtime, that is your server, and by a browser, which will be the client eventually. A few composable we can mention are use cookie, an SSR friendly composable to read and write the document cookie, use head to manage your head tags in a programmatic and reactive way, use fetch, which is pretty cool because if the code is running on the browser, it will behave like a normal fetch, but when running inside your server, it will avoid making the fetch call altogether and will simply call the relative route as a function. These are few of the many composables available and you can define yours within the slash composables directory. If you made it this far, thank you for watching. I hope this video got you a little into Nuxt. I would be very interested in feedbacks for this video. If the concept was clear to you, if I if there are some improvements I can make. I have a tutorial planned for Nox, which basically involved making a social media with it, something like Reddit. Uh, so let me know if you want to see it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.